How's it going everyone? Hope you're all doing well. Thanks for checking out today's video. In today's video, I'm gonna go through a recent personal project that I put together. I put this personal project together with the real intention of pushing my photography further forward. So in this video, I'm gonna talk through some of the methodologies and some of the techniques that I used. I'm gonna talk through some of the things that I learned and also some of the mistakes that I made. So hopefully after this, we can all take something from it and we can learn and we can continue to push our work further forward. So if you're new to the channel, if we haven't met through the magic of YouTube yet, my name is Rich McKeever. I am a commercial and advertising photographer living and working here in London, but I am originally from the beautiful Highland town in Scotland known as Inverness. And on this channel, I do behind the scenes videos, I talk through workflows, and I just generally try and take you guys on this journey with me as I try and carve out a career here in London as a working photographer. And if that sounds like the sort of thing that you're into, you might wanna hit that subscribe button, you might wanna hit that bell, but that's just personal preference. Let's get on with the video. So for me personally, I've always pushed the importance of testing and shooting personal work. The danger is when you start to get commissions that you just start to chase the next commission. You go from one job to the next, and the further you get down the line, there's a danger of you completely forgetting why you picked up a camera and what it is that made you kind of fall in love with photography in the first place. Personally, I, I often found that there was always one aspect of test shoots that fell down. So that might be, maybe I can't find the right stylist, the right hair, makeup, location, model, and often my mentality was just to push through anyway and go ahead with the shoot often leaving me a little bit disappointed with the final outcome, thinking, well, if the styling was right, or if the if we had a hairstylist, it would look so much better and really elevate these images to the next level. And that is the whole intention behind this shoot, is to elevate my shoots to the next level and continue to push my portfolio in new ways. One thing that massively spurred me on to get this done is that over the last few months, I've started working with a mentor. Now there's a bunch of reasons behind this, accountability being one, and uh, when you are self-employed or when you run your own business or even if you're just working from home, even if it's in a company, quite often you can, there can be a, lack of feedback. I can continue to produce work without getting a honest, valued opinion on where it's good and where it's bad. Working with a mentor gives you that real, brutal, honest opinion, but you can rest assured that they have your best intentions at heart. So after a few conversations with my mentor, we kind of agreed that it was really time for me to put together a test shoot, but really not let the usual hurdles that trip me up come into play, and just make sure that I put in the time, the effort, the research to make sure this whole shoot comes together nicely. So we're left with a bunch of beautiful new images that I can put on my website and in my mailers and on my social feed so I can show that to potential new clients and you know, ultimately get more work. Starting from scratch, I started to put together some mood boards. Uh, there's a few live videos linked up in the top left that you can check out and I basically start from absolute scratch, um, mainly relying on my saved collections on Instagram. If you're not doing this on Instagram as a photographer, I would massively recommend it. I think just saving images that you like and then looking at them as a collection really kind of opens your eyes into what you're truly attracted to, what sort of imagery really piques your interest. And uh, I've always really liked the sort of palettes and textures that I often see up in the Highlands of Scotland. Those earthy tones, maybe mixed in with a few bright pastel tones there. And this is something that I was keen to bring into my photography and start to implement, particularly in this shoot. I predominantly shoot uh, sports and active lifestyles, and I absolutely love that stuff. I love working with athletes. I kind of understand it a bit more, coming from like a cycling background. I kind of understand, you know, the importance of catching true movement, but that's not the only thing I wanna shoot. I wanna start to implement these colors and tones and textures and 
working more with a slight fashion angle, you know, because ultimately down the line, I want to be shooting for like fashion brands and editorials and magazines and things like that. So really the intention behind putting this personal work together was to not just push myself technically, but push my portfolio in a direction where I can put myself in front of the right people and get new clients from a different kind of industry. And really this is the sort of intent that I hadn't been shooting personal work with in the past. I hadn't really had that clear mindset of this is the sort of people that I can get in front of if I create imagery like that. So what I would ask you guys is, is this something that you consider in your own photography? Do you find yourself shooting for the sake of it? Are you just padding out your portfolio? Maybe that's something that you need at the moment. But with with each piece of personal work, with each test, just check in with yourself and make sure that you are pushing your work further forward because it's easy to just churn stuff out and tick the boxes. But what is important is to be pushing yourself finding new ways of enjoying photography and um, yeah, continuing to strive. And the the next thing after planning that out in my mind and putting the mood boards together was to reach out and put a team together. It seems super obvious, but one thing that really began to dawn on me at this point of the process was how helpful putting together a well thought out plan and a well thought out mood board was when it came to sourcing a team. What I found with a really solid mood board and a really solid plan, and also just speaking positively about your intentions, not just saying, oh, I'm just putting a test together, would you like to do it? But saying, we're coming out of lockdown, we're gonna get some fantastic images, it's gonna really, I really wanna push all of our portfolios further forward. Those two things really did uh, increase the amount of positive replies. Like nothing changed, you know, my portfolio, if they wanted to check out my previous work was still exactly the same, but it was the intention, the way I spoke about myself and the way I spoke about the work that really made the difference when putting a team together. I took my time, found a great model. I wanted to find someone who didn't look too uh, commercial and also had a really strong background in dance. If you check out the mood boarding videos, you'll know that my intention was to keep an element of movement as to not completely remove myself from my comfort zone from shooting athletes and movement and sport and that sort of thing, but also kind of push it in the fashion direction. So I wanted someone who was a real full-time practicing dancer, but also had like a, a strong, unique look. And we found that with Olive and I think we got some great images of her. And then also I started pushing the mood board out to different hair and makeup agents. So sometimes you can approach uh, hair stylists and makeup artists uh, just directly on Instagram or through their email. But I really wanted to make sure this was a super strong team. So I went through agency rep makeup artists. And like I said, I got a ton of positive replies, you know, and in the end I had my pick of a bunch of different hair makeup artists. And the same goes for getting a stylist on board. I really, messaged and emailed people with intention because I wanted this to be a really strong team on this shoot. In the end, I managed to pull together a really strong team. We had Olive as our model. We had Caroline Wren on hair and makeup and we had Rosie on styling. And I got one of my usual assistants, Joe, involved to help out with all things lighting and all things digital and all things that go into being a photographer's assistant. So on the note of assisting and lighting, I really wanted to push myself and push my lighting in a new direction. I could go in there with the B10 flash heads that I've got here and just do my usual lighting with maybe a soft box or a full tech umbrella that you might have seen in some of my other videos. But for this, I wanted to try something different. The whole purpose of this project, the whole purpose of shooting personal work is to test things out, to try new things and push your work further forward. And one thing that had stuck in my mind recently was a mailer from a local lighting company. In this mailer, I think they sent it out about six months ago, uh, they talked about CRLS lighting. So CRLS is Cine Reflect Lighting System, which basically means taking one light source, using a bunch of different mirrors, and with that single light source, you can make a scene look like it is lit by 10 different lights. It'd take a bit of getting used to, and Joe and I went to the lighting rental warehouse uh, in the build up to the shoot to just get a hands on uh, test with the lighting in their warehouse. One of the guys who works down at Grip Van called 
also called Joe, kind of got a few lights out and he kind of let us have at it, you know, set up a bunch of mirrors. What does this do if it reflects of this type of mirror or that type of mirror? And that gave us enough of a handle on things to approach the day with a bit of confidence so that when it came to shoot day, we kind of knew what we were doing. And as the day progressed, we got more nimble with it and uh, really got to know the lighting system. So the CRLS system can be as simple or as complicated as you want it. And if you guys would like to see a whole video where I kind of talk through that, then let me know in the comments below. There are some fantastic Instagram accounts that are kind of dedicated to this whole technique. I will link them in the description below. So be sure to check them out. And I've also done a little lighting breakdown of this whole setup where I kind of narrate, uh, where I kind of sketch over some of the behind the scenes photos. You can find that on my Instagram. That's also linked below. So make sure you give me a follow and go find that picture. So we've got to this point now where I've really pushed myself with my intention. I've spent time starting from blank canvas, pulling in different influences that I normally wouldn't. I've taken that idea and that concept really tightened it up in its presentation and then I've gone to put together a team. I've approached high level makeup artists and stylists. I've got the exact model I wanted. I've researched and managed to get a great location house together and then I've even gone to the warehouse of the lighting company to have a little play around with this new lighting technique to help the whole shoot come together. And it was all that preparation and really clarifying my intent that made the shoot day, an absolute breeze. We got some great images and I'm really delighted with how everything turned out. I've started pushing this out to new contacts and I really think that it's gonna help me get work with a new style of client into the future. I think the main thing that I learned from this, and it seems super obvious, is that if you put in the time and effort and research, it massively enhances your chances of creating great images, particularly in something that is choreographed such as advertising or commercial photography. So for example, landscapes, if you put the time and effort into learning, okay, what time does the sun rise and set at that location? Um, what's the weather like that day? Am I best heading there on Monday or Tuesday because the weather's gonna be cloudy on Monday? Will it look better in cloud? Doing all your due diligence is gonna significantly improve your chances of getting great images. Now that sounds super obvious, but sometimes you just need to give yourself a bit of a reality check. I know what I did with this. Often I think we can all get a bit complacent and it was really going into this shoot, setting out with the intention that I'm not just gonna let certain things slide and settle for whatever happens. I'm really gonna knuckle down and push my portfolio further forward. And I really think that this is what separates the average photographer from the photographers that stand out. I'd love it if you let me know in the comments if that's something that resonates with you guys. Do you often find yourself, or if you think about it now, are you pushing yourself every time you take your camera out? Do you have personal projects on the horizon that are gonna push your photography portfolio further forward? You don't have to, there's no right or wrong answer, but I'd love to get a little bit of a discussion going on that and perhaps we can all spur each other on to push our portfolios further forward. I guess one of the mistakes or one thing that I learned from this was with regards to the lighting. And I also had this intention of filming some video on the day as well. Now, I do have experience shooting video, sitting here on YouTube, I'm mic'd up, hopefully the quality is okay. And uh, when I was at uni, that's kind of how I learned my craft was like, uh, editing talking head interviews and making promotional videos for like the local bakery and stuff. So I've got a little bit of experience with video. I used to have a glide cam and I used to film BMX stuff as well. But that is where I kind of slacked on this shoot. I didn't have any stabilization. I just shot my stills and then was like, oh, hold on, let's get 30 seconds of video. I'll film it on the 5D Mark IV and I'll just handhold it with a strap around my neck for a little bit of stabilization. If I put enough thought into that and I got maybe a second camera with a glide cam where I could just swap in and out or perhaps working as a director and having a DOP on set and then we can work something out and shoot that ourselves as well, then perhaps I could have come out with a really strong video piece here as well. But 
It's all part of the learning curve. It's not called test work for no reason. This is definitely the big takeaway for me. And yeah, just something else that I will take forward into my future shoot. So there we go, guys. We've come to the end of the video. I hope I've kind of managed to break that down clearly and concisely enough. Sometimes it felt like I was babbling on a bit there, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of an insight as to the importance of shooting personal work, why I put this piece of personal work together and the intention behind it. Maybe it can give you something to think about as you continue to push your own work. Let me know in the comments below if you found any of this useful. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. Surely you're subscribed by now. I'll see you on the next one.